to a sort of special little dev chat that we're doing uh, in these unprecedented times. All of Respawn now is working from home. You know, we've been doing this for about three weeks now, uh, and we have our first major update that we're pushing uh, with the old ways uh, that's launching today. We have done the Bloodhound OP, telling the backstory, uh, source for the Outlands. We have the gameplay trailer live, patch notes are live, blogger live with all the details. But for this, I wanted to bring in Carlos and Jason McCord from our design team to talk about some of the changes that are coming in this patch because we have a few big updates. So fellas, thank you so much for coming. Uh, you know what, first let's talk about uh, our next town takeover uh, with uh, Bloodhound Trials. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, um, if you've played Apex for a while, then you know kind of how a, a town takeover works. So there's a, our legend theme part of the map is getting an update. So we have a Bloodhound one. It's called Bloodhound Trials. Inside, it's located in World's Edge off in the northwest corner of the map. Bloodhound's trials are actually fighting prowlers. So we have, we're have we introducing AI to the game in a, in a really confined area so that they, they can't get out or anything. And you get rewards for that. I don't want to spoil too much how it works. There's also some stuff in there for the lore hounds, specifically related to the, the short film that came out. Players squatting up, especially Bloodhound players up there specifically, make sure to go check out the trials. Uh, in addition to that, we're also, believe it or not, it's duos and map rotation permanently added to Apex. Lots of the community have wanted this for a really long time. You know, we've tested duos a bunch of times with limited time modes over the last year. And every time we do that, we, we make sure we pull data on the effects that it has on our matchmaking queues and on our team-based gameplay to make sure that it retains sort of the core fundamentals that we design Apex around. It took us a little while, but we're happy to say that, that we are confident that duos maintains a healthy queue system for everyone in the world playing at, at you know different hours and stuff and then there's something uh, just to just to make it clear ranked will stay trios duos as the option will be play apex tab only but what about solos right we are a team game first and foremost our decision our gameplay decisions are always made starting there we turned on solos last year in the iron crown event and we actually saw some unhealthy data like we got a lot of feedback that some of it was really good. Some people really enjoyed it. But one particular piece of data that we looked at was new players are much less likely to stick with the game if they only play solos. That was one problem that we, we definitely saw. To that, we've also designed a bunch of the game around our team base, not necessarily trios. I mean, it was trios, our team based design, like our legends have a bunch of abilities that are really useful in squads but are actually completely useless in solos. We have a ping system that we think is really important. We have a revive system that we think is really important. All these things don't work in solos, so we don't want to double down on that for many reasons. That's, so that's, that's why you're not seeing solos in this patch. But we do know people want to play. Uh, they want to have a way to practice. They want to have a way to easily complete challenges and stuff like that. So we know that, and we are going to keep exploring ways to, to let players do that in the future. For now, like grab a friend, go into duos, and enjoy that. Yeah, and in addition to that, map rotation. And so that'll be within the normal play Apex mode, cycling through World's Edge and King's Canyon, correct? Correct. So it'll be World's Edge Season 4, the latest version of King's Canyon, which is Season 2. And we'll also have King's Canyon After Dark version thrown in there. Ranked will also continue to be locked to whatever the map has been set for the ranked split. So that will not rotate. We like to keep ranked, you know, the purest version of the game that you can practice on and really it's really consistent experience. So yeah, I just want to explain it a little bit. Enabling multiple maps in Apex is, is a difficult problem. So when you, we took a long time to consider how we wanted to do it. But obviously players will be like, well, why can't I just select the map that I want? And we, we talked a lot about it, you know, with a lot of smart people on the team that have, that have a lot of experience on this type of stuff. And, and basically just that amount of splitting the community up between the maps that they prefer would really negatively affect queue times um, in different areas of the world or late at night in like most of the world, especially now with duos and trios. And then you let everybody pick their own maps and, and we could see a really unhealthy queue time situation happening from there. So we're keeping the maps on a relatively small window rotation wise. So the goals here are that every day, if you play at the same time, you'll get a variety. You won't, it always, won't always be the same map that you'll be playing in those time windows. Um, we're just going to keep looking at it and try to tweak those times so that we get the right times in there so that people feel like the ability to experience the whole loop. Thank you, McCord. Those are 
some pretty awesome updates. Uh, yeah, in addition, to kind of new content, we've also been making some balance changes to the game. So we have some stuff that's coming in, both to Legends and Weapons, uh, specifically though, just for this. Carlos, I want you to talk a little bit about the highly requested, I think from players, Revenant buff that's coming in this patch today. You know, what those changes are and what that's going to mean for Revenant. It's, uh, you know, it's been a long time coming. We hear people, Revenant is not in a great state and we, the community has said things like that. We, we know all about it. We checked the data. Our data corroborates that. So it made sense for us to buff Revenant. So the incoming buffs, it's actually a pretty big buff. So Revenant's silence is going to have more charges. So you're going to get two charges of silence. And the AoE, when it lands, is going to last longer. And the idea with that is hopefully Revenant players can use this ability to, you know, not just silence their enemies, but also use it as kind of a soft zoning ability. So you can put one over here, one over there, and it blocks line of sight, it'll, enemies go through it, they're not going to use their ability. So it's a little bit of a soft zone, gets you some extra utility out of that. In addition to that, players that get silenced, they get silenced for longer. So it used to be 10 seconds. Now they get silenced for 20 seconds. We noticed that, you know, when you silence someone, you want to be able to capitalize on that. In Apex, like 10 seconds isn't really a lot of time to push and then get a good fight in, especially when you're at kind of a medium range. So doubling that really pushes that ability into a space where when you hit it, you know you have enough time to kind of really use it. The second change I want to talk about is for Revenant's ultimate ability, so his Death Totem. So the big change for that is instead of coming back at one health, players are going to come back with 50 health. You know, a lot of people have talked about this, right? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense for a player to take two fights at 100 versus one fight at 200. When we came up with this ability, we were afraid that it was going to be too strong and we might have overtuned it a little bit. So now you come back with 50 health, you know, or less if you activated it with less, you know, we're not going to give you more health. So at its peak, you're taking a fight at 100 health, and then you come back and then you take a fight at 150 health. Or 175 if you have red armor. That'll be a pretty nice. big buff to the ultimate. And then the final piece of the buff is Revenant isn't going to be low profile anymore. And the reason for this is, again, Revenant's hitbox was based on Pathfinder's hitbox, which, which, which was a little bit skinny. Talking to the rigging guys more, they actually adjusted it because Revenant is actually a little bit bigger than Pathfinder. Taking that into consideration, he's probably closer to a medium hitbox, which will put him at kind of just our normal, not low profile damage state. I'm excited to see how this turns out. I'm excited to go in and play Revenant in the live game. Lifeline is going to get a little love. You know, I know in the map, you're going to start seeing these blue bins and they're going to have Lifeline logos on them. So they're Lifeline bins. And these Lifeline bins, anyone can open them, but there's a secret compartment that only Lifeline can open. And in that secret compartment, there's going to be attachments and some health items that only Lifelines have access to. So it's kind of pushing Lifeline into a more get stuff from my team role, right? right? More of a support via loot role in addition to her healing capabilities. And everyone can loot from that secret right. compartment once it's open. So that'll be pretty cool. I'm excited to see how that turns out. You want to talk about is Evo Armor. So Evo Armor is going to go through mm. a couple small changes where we, we lowered the damage amounts required to level up. Evo Armor is now going to level up at 75, 150, and then 400. Because we, you know, the goal, mm. the goal for Evo Armor was always to be kind of this high risk, high reward thing, but so just lowering all those requirements, hopefully will push it into a space where you're making interesting decisions between, should I take the evil armor or should I take the blue armor or even the, the, the gold armor? Very cool. I think the last thing, at least for this, that we wanted to call out, uh, you know, we had also, especially with King's Canyon, you know, coming back while World's Edge was having its time in the live game, uh, we saw a lot of player feedback as they had transitioned from World's Edge back to King's Canyon uh, about the sort of the loot disparity uh, that people saw there. And so, of course, I know like another update is, you know, we've basically increased the amount of loot that can spawn on the map in King's Canyon now. Yeah, I mean, when King's Canyon was launched, it was bounced for the specific loot tables that we had at the time. And since then we've added Evo shields and we've added some weapons and we've added some sniper ammo. And like, there, there's just more things on the ground. The uh, World's Edge and latest World's Edge for season four have a little more loot in them. Basically, King's Canyon just needed a little buff in loot. So there's a, there's a certain amount we can do right now. We basically bumped up the amount of loot. That's not going to change the quality of loot. And then we'll, we'll just keep looking at it. We'll adjust it more if we need to. Well, guys, thank you so much for kind of coming in and giving some context to some of the bigger changes. There's more that's in this patch for all the players out there. Patch notes are live right now with the bug fixes that we've done. Some weapons have been touched as well. The Old Ways event is live. So Town Takeover, the challenges, Direct Store, all the fun stuff, duos, map rotation, Legendary all of that is in the game. Skins. Make sure to check out our gameplay trailer. Legendary Hunt Skins coming back. Really, really exciting. So yeah, guys, thank you again for coming. And for everybody out there, please continue to stay safe, stay home. 
home, play together, and enjoy the update. We'll be looking at all your reactions and feedback. Enjoy!